Just remember your mics are on. Uh, good morning. Thank you. Um, Trevor, just for you, the, the, um, the inclusion of Alex Carey in the test squad, is, is he there purely as wicket-keeping backup or would he be considered for a middle-order batting role as well? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, initially, Alex was there as backup wicket keeper, and uh, as you know, uh, with South Africa and, and everything that's going on, read the COVID stuff. Uh, it, it's going to be difficult for us to. Well, we won't be able to uh, fly players in and out, so we need to have all bases covered. Alex is there uh, definitely as backup wicket keeper, and the, the current form he's in, of, of course, with the bat doesn't exclude him from uh, uh, possible. Uh, possibly playing a role uh, in the batting lineup if required. David Mark. Uh, thanks. Um, g'day, Trevor and Ben. Um, to Trevor again. Um, two questions, but they are related. Why did you drop Matthew Wade? Yeah. And what has prompted you to keep uh, Travis Head in, in the squad after he was dropped for a couple of games? Yes, yeah, no. Uh, a fair, fair question. Matthew, uh, firstly, if, if I could go there, uh, in our view, hasn't, hasn't done enough. He certainly hasn't done enough uh, over probably quite a few test matches now. Uh, I'm not being unfair to him. He, he would recognise that fact as well. He's holding down a batting position uh, at number five. Sure, he put his hand up to, to have a crack up the, up the top of the order. Um, but holding down a, a specialist batting position hasn't quite done enough, and as a senior player, uh, we expect a little bit more. Uh, in Travis's case, he, he's a, he, to us, has a little bit more upside, and we have given him a bit of a vote of confidence to, to A, try to win his, his spot back in that batting lineup. Uh, we know Travis can go away or go away with the Australian team. He works very hard on his game, and we consider that he can probably improve uh, so much to the extent that he could fight his way back into that Australian side. Thank you. Luke Duffersey. Thanks, Cole. One for Ben. Um, ben, how confident are you that the South African tour will go ahead and, and also what needs to be done from here to ensure that it will go ahead? Yeah, thanks, Luke. Um, yeah, look, we're doing everything we can to give the tour... Um, every chance to be successful and to get away. Um, as you'd appreciate, there, there are a number of fairly significant challenges um, in running international sport during a, during a pandemic. Um, so we are still working through that with Cricket South Africa. Um, and we, we hope to be in a position shortly where, where we can um, resolve all of the, the outstanding items. So um, that's still a work in progress. There, there's still a number of challenges, but we are, we are working through that with Cricket South Africa. Andrew McGlashan. Thanks, Cole. Uh, one for Trevor, if I can. Uh, Trevor, how close was Jai Richardson to going on the test um, tour and what was the deciding factor in eventually going on the on the T21 instead? Yeah, sure. Uh, Jai was discussed at length uh, regarding inclusion uh, for the South African tour. There's no, no doubt. However, uh, we took advice from the medical people and, and in the end it was decided that you know, his comeback to international cricket uh, should be gradual. Uh, and we also figured with, the, with their advice that coming back in the T20 uh, tour to New Zealand would be the I ideal um, comeback for him. Thanks, Trevor. Marty Smith. Yeah, hi, Trevor and Ben. I'm, I'm not sure who's best place to answer this, but just one regarding Will Pukowski. Are you able to provide an update on how he's progressing injury-wise? And is he a contender to fill that number five spot as well? Or do you see him, if fit, a, as an opener? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one, Ben, if that, that's OK. Yeah, uh, yeah. Will, Will's recovery is progressing. Um, he has had his shoulder... Uh, certainly looked at by by uh, medical people. At the moment, they don't feel it necessary for him to have an operation. So we're very hopeful that he will recover in time to take his place uh, in that tour party to go to South Africa. Uh, as far as his batting position, uh, yes, nothing is ruled out there. There is no doubt, and we know that Will can bat 
uh, down the order as well as well as the top of the order. So that could well be a viable option for us. John Perrick. Uh, Trevor, um, just on Tim Payne, was there any thought of him relinquishing the, the captaincy and perhaps even still staying as a player just because of the heavy workload that sort of seemed to affect him as the summer's gone on? And just uh, added one to that, is there a heightened need now to sort of groom a successor? I know Pat Cummins is a vice captain, but is he, is he a legitimate successor if something was to happen to Tim? Sure. Let, let's go to the first part first, John. Thank you. Um, Tim's leadership in our, our mind was never in question. We did not spend one minute on, on uh, Tim's leadership uh, during our, our selection meeting. He's been, a, look, he's been a terrific leader of, of this Australian team through some pretty trying circumstances since, since he's been in the top position. You know, and, uh, and I must say too, if you don't mind, some of the criticism he's had to endure uh, in our view has been pretty wide of the mark. And in, in particular, some of it's been in poor taste from, from overseas people. So I, I think Tim has been fairly unfairly criticised in this instance. Sure, we're, we're all disappointed uh, with the performance of the team and losing to India out here. That's, that's very difficult to, to accept sometimes. But I, I think the criticism of Tim Payne has, has been totally unfair. Uh, and with relation to Pat Cummins, yes, he is the vice captain, and, and we don't have any doubt that um, in certain circumstances, Pat could certainly uh, take over the reins if anything was to happen to Tim Payne in the, in the short term. And, and the other part of your question, of course, we're always looking for leaders and obviously trying where and, and when the opportunity arises to to, to possibly uh, give somebody some experience. And, and over the last week or two, there has been various names thrown up. And, and let's face it, we've got to canvas all of those options and, and try to uh, come up with, with a leader or a group of leaders, which is what we've tried to do over the last few years, that could take Australian cricket forward. Sam Landsberger. Yeah, there, Sam. Uh, we can't, can't hear. Oh, Trevor, just a quick... Cutting in and out, Sam. ...on break. Aaron Finch. Are there any concerns over here? Sorry, you got me now. Yes, that's better. Hello? Yeah, I've got you, Sam. Concerns over Aaron Finch's form in the big bash. Yeah, have you had to... any concerns over Aaron Finch and how you start to the T20 slide with so many specialist openers with Finch and Felipe and Wade and... Uh, short and Stoinis. How do you how do you fit them into a top order? Yeah, exactly right. We'll certainly be be looking at that. There there are plenty of top order players. What we're what we're looking for is um, players, and you you may notice in that list there are there are players that are actually specialising in the middle order. So T Twenty cricket to us is, is role specific, and we'll be we'll be looking for middle order players, knowing that we've got uh, plenty of players that can fill a role at the top of the order. As far as Aaron goes, yes, he's, he's been a little bit out of nick or, or out of runs, whatever they, they like to say these days. Um, and, and yes, he'd be concerned about his perform. But let's face it, on the international stage, he, he is very well credentialed and one of the best T20 players in the world. Go to Tom Wren from uh, Nine Adelaide. Oh, thank you, Cole. Uh, yeah, just one for you, Trevor. Um, just uh, Travis Head, how likely do you think that he'll come straight back into the middle order at number five and play the first test, given no Matthew Way? And I guess just um, obviously players all accountable after the series loss to India. As selectors, do you reflect as well, um, perhaps, on what you could have done differently, if anything, for this series also? Absolutely. And, and I've already done that. We, we've reviewed it uh, amongst ourselves, and of course, um, I'm sure each one of us individually would have reflected on uh, on the performance a of the team and b whether there was anything we could have done any differently. And if I, if I'm serious, I, I can't think of anything else we probably could have done during that series. Um, player wise, we had opportunities to win games, in particular in Sydney, and and we didn't take those opportunities. Uh, and with re with regard to Travis, well. He'll be a frontline contender. We haven't had that discussion yet. We'll we'll do that in due course once we know if this tour is is 100% uh, going ahead. 
Lockie McCurdy. Thank you. Thanks, Cole. Hey, Trevor. Um, I guess some really good news with Tanvi Sanger getting his um, sort of first selection in Australian squad. He's obviously been in a lot of the junior uh, national sides. How long have you been keeping um, sort of tap, tabs on him and how good was it that you could include him in this squad? Yeah, it's been, it's been the last uh, couple of years that we, we've started to hear about Tanvia and, and now seeing him perform uh, in, the, in the Big Bash League and performing very well at the young age that he is, is very exciting. So we obviously have high hopes for him going forward. However, you know, we don't want to put too much pressure on a young player, particularly a leg spinner uh, at the moment, because as we know, leg spin is, is hard. It's hard for young players. And if he gets the opportunity in New Zealand, we have to make sure we look after him uh, because, you know, experienced uh, players at international level obviously will target a new guy and particularly a, a young fellow. But it's a great op opportunity for him and, and not just opportunity, it's great. It'll be great exposure for him to find out just what the standard is like at international level. Joshua Dorr. Thanks, Cole. Um, Trevor, just for you, with Alex Carey going out of the T20 side, who is leading the race to take the gloves for that squad? A couple of guys like Philippi and McDermott coming off really sure. successful Big Bash campaigns. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the last T20 games we played, Matthew Wade, we kept. And, and of course, you're quite right. We have uh, Josh Philippi there as well. Uh, ben McDermott's there as well, who has we kept for his franchise. But uh, jo Josh Philippi uh, probably be, would be next after Matthew Wade. And as we know, he's quite an exciting talent as well with, with both the gloves and the bat. Ben Horn. Trevor, um, just a couple other little selection things. Um, Alex Carey, um, is that sort of a clear succession plan um, in, in terms of wicket keeping? Uh, that he's, you know, he's the guy that you've got in mind for the time when Tim does perhaps um, finish up. And um, and just following up on what you were saying before about the far, about the the any any. Um, if you had your time again, would you have rotated the bowling attack anymore? Okay, let, let's deal with the first one uh, first, of, of, of course. Um, yeah, Alex Carey's been obviously on our radar for some time. He's played limited overs cricket for us, and we thought that was the ideal pathway for him uh, to get to test match level. Uh, Alex, over the last 12 months or 18 months, has got better and better as a player. So I, I think our thinking is reasonably clear there without actually rubber stamping it, if I could put it that way. Um, and then the the second part of your question about rotating the bowlers, in hindsight, that's possibly something that, that could have been done. Uh, of course, prior to finalising any team, we check with medical people. We even check with our, our players sometimes just to find out how they're going. And sure, the games were pretty tight and close together. So maybe we've got to be a little bit more mindful of that going forward. However, in this instance, you know, all, all bowlers ha had recovered sufficiently for the medicos to give them the thumbs up to, to go ahead. Andrew Wu. Yeah, hello. Uh, this one's for Ben um, about uh, South Africa. Um, can, can you run us through some of the issues that uh, you, you need to clarify or, or, or come to some kind of a agreement with uh, South Africa? And, and would one of them be... Uh, uh, the hotel staff and, and having them, um, I suppose, spend um, two or three weeks in the hotel before they meet your players so that you can be confident they haven't brought uh, COVID-19 into the hub? Uh, you look, I think the, the, the critical thing is that we work with Cricket South Africa to establish um, the appropriate biosecurity protocols to sit around a tour like this. Um, uh, we've been fortunate here in Australia to have relatively low low cases of COVID, but we know obviously in South Africa um, they're unfortunately experiencing a second wave of the virus. So we're working hard with Cricket South Africa to establish all of the protocols that would sit around the environment in which the teams will need to operate. Um, we're also working hard with our own authorities here just on um, making sure we've got uh, a clear and safe passage for the team going into and out of South Africa. So they're, they're certainly a couple of the key considerations for the tour um, that need to be worked through. And, and we, you know, we obviously keep 
the health and safety um, of our players, staff, and our, our community at, at the absolute forefront of our decision making. So, um, hence, while we're not currently quite in a position to to um, formally announce that the tour is proceeding, um, but we did feel it was appropriate to to announce the squad and um, uh, with the intention that we, we continue to work through that with Cricket South Africa. How confident can you be about the South African tour going ahead? Uh, as confident as you can be, uh, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, obviously it's a very fluid situation as it has been throughout our whole summer um, and as it is for all international sport at the moment. So um, we, we appreciate that, you know, we need to be adaptable here. We've got a role to play in um, helping international cricket to continue to, to, be, to be played during this time. Um, but we are monitoring the, the situation daily. We are conversing with Cricket South Africa daily. We're certainly taking advice from our, our medical experts um, with that imperative that, that the, the health and safety of our group um, is, is our number one priority. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Brett Graham, we'll go to uh, those who haven't had a question yet and see how we get to a second round. Brett? Yeah, hi. Question for Trevor in relation to Matthew Wade's omission from the South African squad. Uh, where does he stand going forward? Would he still be in contention for the test team in the right circumstances or would you consider that unlikely? No, t totally in consideration, as is all, all, all of our players, of course, that are left out of the, any of our teams. We, we, never, we never say that's it. You know, he's still got some good cricket left in him, Matthew. There, there is no doubt about that. So, so no, he's certainly not not crossed off for, for the remainder of his career. Thank you. Adam Burnett. Yeah, hi, Trevor. Just asking, uh, curious about where James Pattinson and Ashton Agar are with their injuries and uh, also um, wondering about the England uh, selection policy. They've uh, got the likes of Joss Butler and Ben Stokes, guys like that, sort of rotating in and out of their test team a little bit at the moment. Is that something that you would consider? Yeah, um, the first part of your part of your question was sorry, I, I lost. That's uh, all right. The first part was uh, Agar and Pattinson. Yeah, sure. No, they're they're recovering uh, quite well. We expect Ashton Agar to take his place on the tour to New Zealand, and James Pattinson has has recovered and and he's bowling again. And prior to departing for South Africa, I understand there's at least one Sheffield Shield game that uh, he'll be able to play in, and, and we'd obviously require him to do that. So no, they're, they're, they seem to be recovering nicely. Um, and then with, with um, uh, the English policy of, of having players in and out a little bit, they obviously opt to do that from time to time, uh, even in, in test match series, because they're very important players. And we've done it a little bit here, maybe not so much um, for test matches, but we've recently just done that with Pat Cummins, of course, and, and others. Um, when we rested them for the, the short form games. And I, I think we probably saw the benefit of that uh, at the end of the season when Pat Cummins was firing all cylinders um, and probably I would suggest courtesy of, of giving him a break at the appropriate time. Thanks, guys. We've got a couple uh, second rounds and uh, we'll finish up. So we'll go back to uh, Andrew McGlashan. Thanks, Cole. Ben, one for you if I can, just slightly broader on... Hub life bubbles, uh, biosecure bubbles. It's been what eight or nine months now that cricket's been operating like this. Um, you've got these two tours coming up, another IPL on the horizon. What's the feedback from the players been like about it, and how sustainable over perhaps the next twelve months do you see this way of working being? Yeah, thanks for the, the question, Andrew. Um, uh, first thing I'd say is uh, I couldn't be more proud of our. Our group, inclusive of players, staff, families, all of the people that sit around running running international cricket, um, there's no doubt that there are significant challenges with bubble life. Um, but the way that our our group has carried themselves um, throughout has been exceptional. Um, you know, and likewise to all of the teams that are doing that, um, you know, across the globe um, to keep international cricket going. Um, we, we're obviously very focused on the health and well-being of our people, so we're putting in place the best possible environments for people to, to operate in when they are inside the bubbles um, or the hubs. We are making sure that we've got the appropriate support resources around um, and that you know, we're working with players on any, in, any in particular sort of pressure points that they may have. 
Um, but coming back to the start, I think our, our groups handled themselves very well. Um, there's no doubt there's some fatigue in there. Um, there's no doubt that we've got to keep monitoring that and we'll continue to, to, to prioritise that with our, with our group moving forward. Thanks, Ben. Probably just got time for two more. We'll uh, go back to uh, David Mark and finish off with Ben Horn. Thanks very much, Cole. Um, just to, Trev, I just want to go back to um, the, the question about the rotation of fast bowlers. Um, with respect to Mitch Stark, he looked, from the outside at least, a little bit tired in the third test, and you did have two fresh fast bowlers that were with the squad. So did you have any discussion about replacing Stark for that fourth test? And if so, what were they? No, we didn't. We, we didn't. We, we considered that um, those three fast bowlers who had performed very well for Australia over a long period of time now were, were the best ones for the job. So, so no, we didn't. We probably thought about it, um, but once we checked to make sure they'd recovered sufficiently, we thought that was the, the best attack. Um, and as I suggest, uh, they'd served Australia very well on many occasions in the past. And, and normally, and I, I think a lot of people would say the same thing, you know, it, we score enough runs, we generally back that attack to bowl sides out. Unfortunately, it didn't happen on this occasion. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, last one uh, with Ben Horn. Ben. Thanks, Carl. Um, ben, just uh, one for you to, to finish with. Um, I was just wondering, uh, you know, is Cricket Australia pushing ahead with inquiries um, about whether the vaccine might be uh, a possibility for the Australian team before they go to South Africa? And have you had any... Um, sort of feedback from the health department about that? And yeah, I think, Ben, I know there's been some, some reports of that recently. Um, the, the reality is we're, we're liaising with our government on, on as I said before, the, the safe passage of our team to and from um, our overseas to a location. So in this case, South Africa and New Zealand. Um, and that's important that we, we understand that, that environment. And then as part of those discussions, we, we, we obviously sought some clarification on uh, the vaccine timeline here in Australia, just to understand um, how that would overlay with our tours. Um, so I guess just to, to clarify that, that point, the, the, the priority is on, on making sure our group can, can go away to a tour, can return back to Australia safely. Um, and we're doing everything we can around that um, to, set, to, to satisfy um, our queries on that in that regard. And have you had any indication on that timeline? Oh, I, I, only the, the timelines that have been reported by the government in the media. So um, that's, that's really a, a matter for the, for the government in terms of how they're rolling out the vaccine here in Australia. Um, and as I said, we've, we've just sought some, some guidance from the government on their advice around travel, travel, travelling internationally at this point in time. Thank you.